All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 6. I hope everyone is doing great today. I know that I am. We do have a couple things to catch you guys up on that I did off camera um, after the last episode. So we'll get to that in just a minute here, but I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. I know that I have uh, been. There's a lot more that's going to be coming down the pipeline and not to get repetitive, but we are taking our time with this pack. We are going to uh, kind of use it to its fullest extent, do some awesome builds. Take advantage of every single mod, and uh, or at least most of the mods, more than what we've done in the past. Kind of hold off on a lot of the technology stuff until we get a little bit further in. Because once you start hitting technology, um, things just start... Uh, uh, you start losing oomph for some of the other mods that might be a little bit more early game, which there are a lot of them. And so I don't want to overlook any of those. So that is the plan. We're going to hold off on technology for quite some time now, uh, or at least d not dive too deep into it once we do get into it and really, really take advantage of a lot of these intro mods. Anywho, so let's get into things today. So I already know what we're going to be doing today. We're going to switch it up and uh, be working on a little bit more of organization than anything and I believe I did mention it in the last episode it has been a couple days since I last uh, recorded so you'll have to forgive me if I don't recall everything that we talked on in the last episode I know you guys probably just watched it and then you jump to this and, and you're like wait wait a minute you, you talked on that in the last episode but you're not going to do it I honestly I don't remember guys it's been a couple days but coming down to our farm area here I had spent a little bit more time cleaning it up and expanding um where I could so um, I don't fully remember what all I really did off camera, but pretty much just added more foods down here. We have a lot more trees, more plants, more berry bushes, just really, really grew it out. Try to push it up the hill a little bit more. This is a little bit more enclosed in. We do need to get a roof on top of it, and I really haven't fully decided on how I want to necessarily do that. I want to look into some different mods and see if maybe we could just do a peaked roof. Uh, that would be pretty cool um, if we actually just did a, a peaked one instead, or if we just honestly left it flat. That. or the other option is if we made a top side garden which would be really really cool like a roof garden uh, where we have plants that are growing above which would be really awesome to see we might do that that's actually kind of a cool cool idea right there in itself we are a little bit hungry here let's get some pasta with mutton chop going there we go a little bit of food um, but yeah, we have added on and expanded out, as you can see, lots more that has grown in as well. We do have these grapes here, and I really don't know like how we get the grapes. I'm a little bit confused on it. I do believe Simple Farming actually has um, a book that you might be able to get. Uh, let's uh, get this pulled up here. So Simple Farming... Because I really don't know. It doesn't really tell us. I guess I could... I guess I could look it up online. It probably would make the most sense for me just to do that instead of trying to, to navigate through here because it really doesn't look like it's going to tell us here. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I thought that grapes would just grow on these and then like kind of grow down, you know what I mean? Or grow onto the actual like bushings themselves, but it doesn't seem to be the case. And they've been like this for quite some time right now. So um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe they're not in the right environment for it. That could be it as well. Uh, but I kind of wish that they would tell us like what environment they need to be in for them to grow properly. But who knows? We'll have to look into it. Like I said, any whoosens. Because I don't even think, I don't think there's a, uh, if we go into options and controls, category, if we go to simple, yeah, there's no controls it seems like for it. So now moving right along, as you can see, we have it loop around right over here. Um, That crow, okay, he went away. He knew, he knew he was getting axed. Um, it loops around and I did expand out as you guys can see. So we now have a huge area, a nice big pond area that we uh, kind of, well, we just man made it. You guys know it wasn't there last time. We have a bunch of fish that have already started spawning in there, which is really cool. Um, and I obviously have planted a bunch of wheat around it to let that grow in and again, give it more of a uh, wholesome grown aesthetic to it. So, and obviously we did man make a lot of this, uh, these features around here added in this hilling and, and, and inclines and declines and put in all these different trees, added these uh, extensions to the trees as well, you know, giving them a root look like feature, which is pretty cool. That fish is really trying, that bluegill is trying to get up there. He's doing his best. Um, but I think overall it's looking really, really good. I can't wait for more things to grow in here. Um, and I think this is going to be a really nice place uh, for us, not only have crops and we'll extend our crops over to this area right here as well, right in this space, because it's a bit barren right now. We'll add some more in there, uh, but also maybe do a little bit of fishing here because we do have obviously some fish spawning in here. So it'd be cool that we could come down here, get some fish if we needed to and add them into our uh, 
into any of our meals that we're trying to make, obviously. So let's get our sleeping bag ready to go here because it is starting to get nighttime. That's pretty much it. Just a, a couple of aesthetic things that we got up and going. So nothing too, too crazy. Uh, but one of the big things that we are running into, obviously, is our way down here. Um, it's not really efficient for us to get down here. Um, well, actually, okay, I'll take that back. It's actually not too bad for us to get down here because we could just jump off of our overhang right there and glide down here. Um, but getting back up is a little bit more tricky because we pretty much just have to hop our way up all the way to the top. Now we have our path to here, and I did realize that the path from the village actually is right here. So this would actually be relatively easy to connect in. And I think the goal from there is to actually then have uh, a path created that will run all the way this way and then run all the way up the hill over there. Um, I think that would be the best. We do have this mine shaft here, which we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to. Don't worry, guys, it'll be coming soon. So, but yeah, we're gonna have a path that comes this way and goes all the way up the hill um, to our to our um, hillside cabin up there. Um, now, the other thing that we are gonna do as well, I'm giving you a couple spoilers or future looking things that'll be coming down the pipeline. Um, we are gonna get some bees up and going, obviously, because they're great at resource production. Um, and the bees are just so cool. They're just such a fun aesthetic. And uh, honestly, the earlier you get them in and allow them to start creating that honeycomb and utilizing that in a good way, uh, the better. The better for you guys, the better uh, resource production and backlog you can actually get um, without having to necessarily just go down in a mine and mine up the resources yourself. So I'm thinking this area right here might actually be converted into our bee area. I feel like there's a lot of space for it, um, considering it's just up the hill from the farm. So that's kind of the idea thus far. Uh, but obviously, uh, you know, that's for a future project. Right now, we need to address a much bigger problem, which is our storage. Our storage is just atrocious right now. Um, it's extremely hard to find anything. Um, and uh, we really could just do an overall better job of it. So the plan is to actually get into the pipes mod. I believe it's called pipes. We'll have to look at the um, double check on the quests here. If you go into your questing, it is actually one of the quests quest lines under storage it is this one down here pretty pipes is what it is called um, and so we can read a little bit more on this we've already checked the box on it we've already gotten the reward i do have this sitting around for us no power which we definitely don't have any power no problem pretty pipes is a powerful early game logistical system or logistics system, I should say, that will help keep you organized. Use pipes to move items from place to place, filter and prioritize to ensure items are ending up in the right locations and access everything centrally from an item terminal or crafting terminal. Request-based auto crafting is possible as well, which is awesome. So starting off, this is gonna be the first one. So to get things moving, we're going to need pipes. Obviously, makes the most sense, we're gonna need pipes. So craft up a bunch of them. So Pretty Pipes follows a few fairly simple rules that are good to keep in mind when building with them. First, a section of pipe may only insert or extract. So again, you can only insert and extract on one, uh, um, uh, for, yeah, yeah, to right there. Yep, okay. Therefore, to send items from one chest to another requires a minimum of two pipes. So again, like one pipe, uh, length is going to be for one chest another pipe length would be for another one so you can't have them right next to each other um, but or if you did you'd have to do a little bit of a loop in the back so keep that in mind second an item will never be routed back to the inventory it was extracted from so it's not possible to simply loop pipes around a furnace for instance to feed the output back into it an intermediate storage inventory is required so, for example, from a furnace, we couldn't just have a looped pipe back into it. We would have to have a pipe into a chest, right? Pipe into a chest. That chest would then have to go back into the furnace if that was the, the plan for it. Now, uh, for us, we probably won't be doing that right off the bat. Third, pipe sections can be disconnected from inventory by right-clicking them with the wrench, which we already have. They were kind enough to actually give that to us. Finally, upgrade mo or I'm sorry, forced upgrade modules may be installed in a section of pipe by right-clicking the module on the pipe. Alternatively, right-clicking with an empty hand allows one to access the pipe, add, remove, or configure modules. So you could you could get in and kind of just do some tinkering on your own. And then finally, pipes may be uh, covered with most any block, even transparent or partial blocks. Really? Okay, we're gonna have to test that out. I am actually pretty interested in that. So. 
First and foremost, guys, we need some pipes. That's what we need first. We are going to need tin for this, and I believe I have a little bit of tin crafted up uh, for our usage. Yep, we do. We don't have too much laying around, though. I have one singular tin chunk just hanging out. I don't know why it's just hanging out, but it is hanging out. Um, the other thing is, is we're probably going to want to figure out a better way of storage for these guys Th these are nice the chests are nice but for the things that we have a lot of i know we started using these these bins but these bins are even a little bit tedious to do so we might get into some drawers as well um, but let's not let's not hold uh have that hold us back for the time being so we are going to need some glass i believe let's open this up and we'll get our pipe going here so uh i think to start actually what what how many should we get going maybe we'll do Mm, I think it's uh yeah shapeless so you can put it in any way we'll do 36 to get us going here um because I think that would be good enough I'm gonna put some stuff away we do have a lot on our inventory currently we are gonna need that wrench so I did put it in here so there we go we have our wrench and let's put that away let's put this string away I think we can put this uh, industrial hemp fiber I'm sorry it's not necessarily string we'll put that away I mean, we do have an arrow. We have so much junk on us right now. That's how it works. We always have so much junk. So we have our pipes, right? So we can turn in this quest. Let's get over to it um, and turn it in. We are going to get an alchemist to light the random thing from that section. And then it's going to start us into a different path. So we have item filtering, item routing, and then item terminal. I feel like the terminal is going to be the next thing that we're going to want to try to get into. Um, we are going to need a couple of different things. And we are going to need Invar. Are you serious? We need Invar from it. Mm, this is not going to be fun. How do we get Invar very easily? I mean, if we had Invar dust, oh, we have to get an alloy kiln up and going, which I was not expecting to get into right now. Um, but you know what? You, you kind of got to do what you got to do, right? So we might have to do this from immersive engineering. At least get that going. We are going to need nickel as well, which I don't know. Do we have nickel? We do have a little bit of nickel. Okay, let's get that. Let's get that in there. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately, we are going to have to get the alloy kiln going. Um, shift for info allows viewing and requesting items. That, uh, oh, that's the, my bad. We need the alloy kiln from immersive engineering. So if we go to immersive engineering, we should be able to get a book from immersive engineering, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't believe we have it just yet. I thought we got the tome. Did we not? Did we not get the tome? Um, did we throw it somewhere? What happened to our tome? Tome of weaponry um that's not really what we're looking for that's all that stuff those are normal books that's the quest book um which is nice to have but we don't really need it there it is that's the tome oh we did get the flask of shielding that's actually pretty cool i've never seen that before what is that from um uh, batania really huh i've never seen that from batania before uh, but maybe i just haven't dove that far into batania so um, we should be able to open this up and holy smokes it already has all the books in it Okay, so we don't even need to worry about it, which is really nice. And they're all in alphabetical order. Oh, these guys are amazing. Shout out to the mod team for that. So immersive engineering, um, we're definitely going to want to get that open. Um, and you do complete an advancement for it, which is kind of funny that you do. And we want to go into uh, simple machines, maybe? No. Heavy machinery, tools, power wires, construction. Yeah. Multi-block constructions, I believe, is what we're going to want. Um, Maybe not. I think, we, can we not look through this? Okay, I'm going to have to do a little bit digging here. All right, so we got it figured out here. So if you go into your book here, actually right here, this little tab, it's kind of hard to see here with the coloring. Um, actually, maybe it comes a little bit better on Camry, but for me, it was just a little, it wasn't that obvious. So all I got to do is start typing. And it'll kind of start filling in what you're looking for. So we typed in kiln and it pulled up alloy kiln here. We can just or left click on it and it pulls up what we need to get going for the alloy kiln. It's a simple furnace made out of heat resistant sandstone and bricks. So really just sandstone and bricks is all you got to do. Um, you craft it up just like so. And it is a one to two ratio pretty much. So like one recipe gets you two bricks, which is really nice or two. Yeah, two of the kiln bricks. And then this shows you how you can actually set it up. So it's a two by two by two structure. So overall, you're going to need eight of them. Um, so you're going to have to do this crafting four times. So you're going to need eight of the sandstone and eight of the bricks. So pre honestly, pretty straightforward. It's, it's not too hard. So let's get this a rocking and a rolling here. 
um, and I should be able to shift and click on that and that'll get us all of the ones that we need. And then honestly, we just need to find a good location to stick this guy. Um, and I think out here is actually gonna be our best bet. I'm just gonna take this out right here, like so. We'll stick it in and you know what we are going to need is a hammer, a, a engineer's hammer, I believe. Um, but it is getting to nighttime. Let's sleep really quick and then we'll get that hammer because I believe you just have to tap it with the hammer and then you will be good to go if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, with an engineer's hammer. And I don't think I have one laying around. Um, yeah, it's, we don't have one in there. Don't have one in our backpack, so we're going to have to make one really quick. So, engineer, if I could spell, engineer's hammer. That's exactly what we need. Um, and all we need is a little bit of string, which we got plenty of. And we can come in here and craft it up just like so. We will need this later down the line, so it doesn't hurt to have it. And all we gotta do is we should be able to shift, right click on it, and there we go. We are all set up. Now, Aztec Tome, if you don't want it to be the uh, the same here, I believe, can't you shift and maybe shift and left click? Yeah, shift, left click will turn it back to normal. Um, so you can then go and uh, switch it to a different one if you so choose to do that. All right, so we have the alloy and kiln here. I just want to get this rolling because we know that we're going to need invar for this. We're also going to need electrum, seriously? Uh, but we can do that in the alloy kiln. It's just gold and silver. That is actually really nice that we can use the alloy kiln for this stuff. So um, I think we just need cobble and stuff for that. So invar, what was it? So we're going to need a decent amount of it. Um, at least eight pieces, right? Um, so we're going to need nickel and iron. I think it wouldn't hurt for us just to make up as much as we can because we'll probably be using it down the line. So we have our nickel here. We do have a little bit of iron. We're going to need some more iron here. Um, and we need to craft up some more iron, I should say. We should need to smelt more iron uh, because we're running fairly low there. Now, I hope this might be a caveat to it. I think you need coal coke in order for it to run. So we might actually have to get something else up and going if I'm remembering correctly. But what we're going to try to do is run it without it. Hopefully we can do it. If not, then we're going to unfortunately have to uh, get it going. No, actually you can run it without coal coke. Coal coke is very nice to do. You can get it from immersive engineering, um, but you don't have to use it, which is really, really nice. I was actually a little bit worried there that we were going to run into some problems with that. Uh, but we seem to be good. So let me get some resources gathered up here and then bring you guys back once we are ready to do a little bit more crafting. All right, guys, we should have everything that we need. I hope we're going to try to get into some crafting here. I already went ahead and I laid down some piping here. It's actually relatively easy to get these guys down um, and easy to get them back up. As you can see, we can just use a pickaxe and get them down and then just place them like so. Or if you have your pipe wrench, you can just shift and right click and it'll pop them off easy peasy. Now, if you want to get into them, like it's mentioned in the uh, in the quest line, you take an empty hand and you right click on it. Um, you can open up the interface for it and you can see the modifiers that you can put on, which is pretty cool. Now, for the time being, um, I think we're pretty much set. I don't think there's really anything else we can do for it at uh, right now, other than starting to get into some of the modifiers as well as the um, interface. We would definitely want to get the interface going here. So we're going to need a couple of things, and honestly, uh, I think we're going to need quartz as well, which well, that might be an issue where we do need to go to the nether, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we do need a piece of nether quartz. Just don't have that currently, which is not good. We might have to, to reconsider this now, because um, if we have to go to the nether to get that, uh, then we're, we're kind of in, in a tough spot. Unless we can head out and find another portal in the world that would somehow have it. Um, it does look like there's a possibility that we could find this nether quartz ore um, in the overworld, maybe. Um, here we go. Spawns in the overworld. False. False. Okay, so it only spawns in the nether. Uh, that's a big yikes. Okay, so unfortunately, looks like we're only going to find it in the nether. So we're going to have to get a nether portal going. Okay, um, but we could at least start on some of the crafting, I guess. We'll have to hold off on, on some of that there for, for the time being. Um, okay. We are going to need some obsidian, which I don't know if we have any obsidian just laying around. Don't think we do. Wow, we're, we're really in a tight spot. I don't know if we're going to be able to progress as much as we wanted to today. Mm, let me try to get some stuff together, and then we'll try to get this all sorted out, because really, I, I would like to be able to get the pipes up and going today. 
All right, guys, I was able to find some more diamond, made up a diamond pickaxe, and we're down here getting some obsidian so we can actually get another portal up and going. Um, and honestly, gotta say, the vein miner or miner, whatever you want to call it, is the best thing for mining up obsidian just because of how efficient it is um, with, with pulling up so much of it, honestly. I'm um, kind of, that's the problem. I mean, when you mine up obsidian, you're really only getting... A, uh, a piece or two of it right when you mine it uh, but this one allows you to get way more and look at this it even exposed even a more diamond for us so we're actually getting a little bit of a return on investment there and um, we're gonna get this gold as well there's also coal here some cinnabar and there's some lapis down there wow okay we got a good amount of stuff there um, now we can head back to the surface and uh, and kind of keep going on things get another portal up and going I think I want it to be upstairs I was debating on having it down here in the caves but I think that's too long of a haul for us to try to travel down here every single time oh that was a close call we got away from him though we're fine um, yeah, it's a little bit too far of a if it go for us to have to walk all the way down into the mines every single time that we want to go to the nether. Just don't think it's worth it that much. So anyways, let's head back up to the surface. I'll get our nether portal up and going and we will get into the nether. All right, so I do have the perfect place to put this portal. We are obviously back on the top side here. And uh, we ended up getting almost two stacks of obsidian from that, which was a really good haul for us. I mean, it is unfortunately starting to get to nighttime, though, so we are going to have to sleep here relatively soon. But I thought down in here in this mine shaft, it would be kind of cool if we had it just like tucked along the side or something like that uh, so that we could we could access it, um, but not it uh, interfere with our main area because honestly that's it just gets annoying after a period of time you hear the noises and everything like that and things can come out of it like piglins and stuff like that um so i think this might be our best bet is to uh to kind of hide it down in here now realistically it'd probably make more sense for us to create its own designated area and i mean we could go all the way down there if we really wanted to to set something up um, but i think this area would be just fine um just as long as we kind of clear out a little bit of space here um, and then clear out the wall. So I think right here um, is going to be uh, good enough. Actually, I might grab some of these blocks. I will hold on to those rails. Grab some of these items and let's just fill in a little bit here uh, where we can. Because obviously we want to be able to, to get over to that. And uh, if we, we aren't able to, then uh, okay, we're, strugg we're struggling here. We're struggling. Okay, there we go. And we'll grab some of these as well. And uh, just kind of place these in to fill out this this landscaping here and then we'll just tuck it even further back i think this location will be just fine for it yeah i think this is going to work perfectly all right so all we got to do is clear out a little bit more space just like so and obviously we'll reuse some of these blocks uh to fill this out and make it look all nice and pretty one two three one, two, three. I think this will this will be bigger than what we actually needed. So you don't have to have it that big. But we got the obsidian for it, so why not? I think that uh, that's going to do it for us. A three wide right here on the side. I mean, we could make it two if we wanted to. I already placed it. It's too much effort to to go back and uh, and undo what we have already just done. So let's get these placed in the ceiling here, just out of sight, out of mind, right? And then let's get our um, our flint steel going. So that should do it just like so pretty easy peasy and let's see what our luck is getting into the nether hopefully fingers crossed we get a good spawn in here and hope honestly hopefully we get something we get the what we need right off the bat if we could get what we need right off the bat oh look at that we did get what we need quartz crystals right off the bat i think that's what we need oh okay so we don't actually get any quartz from that that's a little bit unfortunate then what's the point right what is the point? Oh, you do need a pickaxe for it. Okay. Oh, we do already have piglins dying out there. Um, okay, so we've picked up a little bit of this. I do want to be cautious of our surroundings. Make sure nothing is going to attack us. And that is nether quartz. Perfect. This is exactly what we need. We've got the best possible spawn. Whoa, 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 whoa. Something set us on fire. Like, right away. I have no idea what that was. Ooh, you see that? Oh, it's he's actually holding it. I thought it, he died and dropped it, but that is not the case. Okay. But yeah, this is a great spawn really really nice but again we don't need to be in here right now i just wanted to get some quartz hop in hop out that's all we needed to do quick in and out we'll do some more exploration down the line so let's get crafting then all right guys so i got everything ready 
and Roran to go in order for us to get the item terminal. Now, this isn't the crafting terminal. We will, again, uh, we'll actually have to get another item terminal up and going in order to get that. Um, so we might hold off on that for the time being, but this should help us out in order to view everything in the system. Um, so we come into here, and I think it's just because we're filtered. If we unfilter, we can see everything within our system, um, and we can request it, which is really nice. So I think we can put stuff in and request things out. So let's say, for example, hey, I want to put this away. It will stick it away. Now, unfortunately, I don't think it'll filter it to where we would want it to go. It's just going to go to whatever is um, easiest for it to place it in. So has it even placed it yet? There it is. Yep, it placed it right in here. So unfortunately, a lot of our stuff is going to get mixed up. Um, we're going to, I mean, realistically, we're going to lose a lot of stuff. That's how it is going to be. Like our chests aren't going to be as organized as we would like them to be. But hey, that is perfectly fine as is. So really, the next thing would be a crafting one. And the crafting one, um, I don't know if we can stack these. It'd be kind of cool to see if we could. Uh, but I feel like the crafting one would be the best bet. Now, the item one is for viewing and requesting. Now, if we go back to the pretty pipes one, I wonder if the crafting one acts as both. So allows requesting ingredients for crafting recipes, supports auto filling from JEI if installed. Mm, I just don't know what that necessarily is going to mean for us. We do need a low crafting module for it, which is not too shabby. We probably could get that going relatively easily. Um, we just need a few things. We need a crafting table for one, um, which of course, why would we have what we need for that on hand? So one, two, three, four, um, we'll get that going. Now do remember guys, that you're going to probably want to shift it to the base Minecraft one, just like so. And then we're also going to need a servo. There we go. And we can get that going. Now I'm going to take this. And we're going to take the item terminal. We're going to take the low uh, crafting module and get the crafting terminal. Now let's see how this works. Okay, so actually it does look like we can request and... We, we can pretty much do everything, but then on top of that, we also have the crafting in hand. So let me see here. If I, let's say, want to stick away the stone, it will put it away. Cool. So this acts as both. So really, this is all you need up and going. You don't need the normal terminal unless you just want to view stuff. Um, this is really going to be your source of truth. Now, we have this one set up like so, but I don't know if I want it upwards or if I want it to be recessed down. I feel like this kind of is going to get in the way um, if it's this high up. So let's grab our pickaxe here. Let's get rid of this um, and let's recess it one into the ground. I feel like that's going to make the most sense to have it hidden down here so it's not in our way. Now the other thing will be is it does appear that it is pulling in these ones here from our bins which is really nice to know so we don't have to go into those and I believe it'll prioritize those bins we'll have to kind of tinker with it we'll probably need to put some filters on those ones specifically so it doesn't get all messed up but that's pretty much going to be it uh, for the most part what we still need to do obviously is uh, clean up a little bit because things are a little bit out of whack here so let's get these placed back down just like so i'm um, covering all of that up and then we do need to go back in our backpack grab our paved boys here and place them there um, and then everything else should be pretty straightforward. Now, I don't want to use cobblestone for this. Um, there's really no need to. Um, I think what we could honestly just use, well, we could test this out. If I grab some of these, how, how do we, can we like increase the number? If I just request one, sending request for one limestone, okay. You can shift and you'll shift left click and you'll get a whole stack of it. So that's pretty nice. So we could request 64. And there we go, it pulled it right out. Not the quickest, I will say, um, but I'm guessing with some upgrades, it'll make it even faster, which is super, super cool, guys. And then we can just throw those back in there and back in there. So, and we can honestly just throw everything in there. We don't really need any of this on us. Now, again, guys, it's not going to be very pretty. Keep that in mind. It's going to send it to wherever it can send items to, wherever it sees that it has them available or open spaces available, I should say. So yeah, keep that in mind. But if we do go to crafting, let's say, so we don't need another item terminal. We've, we've kind of figured that out and we've already progressed pretty far ahead with this whole thing. So we have gotten the crafting terminal up and going. So we'll click on that. And then the low crafting module actually comes after that, which is very, very interesting. 
Um, item routing is probably going to be the next line that we go down. So retrieval and extraction modules are required if anything is going to get anywhere. Naturally, extraction modules pulls from the adjacent inventories and send the items out to the network, assuming they have a place to go. Retrieval modules, in the opposite fashion, pull from far inventories in an attempt to place items into the adjacent chest. A simple network it might consist of two chests connected by two lengths of pipe. So pretty interesting. And then obviously item filtering, which is pretty cool. So you can use these to then obviously filter your items. And there's a lot of differentiation in there as well. Like, um, what did it say here? And um, you can stack limiter, which limits the number of items allowed in the inventory and works alongside other things, which is pretty cool. Um, and then this is, again, this is kind of weird why this one comes out at the end. I'm guessing a low crafting module we could attach onto like a workbench type scenario. Where, why do we have a diamond chunk? Where did we, oh, we got all this from the stuff we've picked up. Wow. Okay. Wow. We got a lot of stuff. I'm like, where did this come from? Why do we have this on us? Um, which is pretty funny. But what can these chunks be used for? You can make diamond dust out of them, or you can get a cluster. Um, I think for the time being, just kind of sticking them away uh, will be our best bet. Now, we do have some of these other chunks, right? Which I think it would be really cool if we had a filter set up and had them loop into, like, one of the furnaces. Now, I don't know. I think it said you do need to have two. You have to have two pipes in order for this to work. You can't have an insertion and a retrieval on the same end. So we would have to kind of double this one up. Um, but this is really just the intro to it. As we get a little bit farther progressed, we'll probably set up a little bit more automation for uh, for just everything, honestly, for all of these different um, pipes. So we can just have them automatically filter all of these different chunks into respective locations. We also got this Eye of Blaze, which is very interesting. What is this used for? Hmm, I don't know. It doesn't really have a use right now, but I'm sure it'll come in down the line. And then obviously we could change these up if we really did want to filter things, but I think for the time being, it's perfectly fine. The one last thing I'm going to note before we do wrap up the episode is it did say that you could cover these, um, and I really don't know like what they meant by that, because in looking at deeper right um let's actually go into the quests real quick before we wrap out like i said so it did say they may be covered with most any block even transparent or partial block simply hold the desired cover in your off hand and right click a section oh in your off hand okay so if i have it in my off hand and then what right click it said um Unless it doesn't work with this. It said most everything. Let's go back to the basics. We'll do cobblestone, right? If I hit it, if I have it in my offhand, right? And I hit it with cobblestone. I'm right clicking on it. Shift right click. Nope, that doesn't do it for us. Hmm. I really don't know because it's in our offhand. And I would think, I think it's actually maybe on that side you would have to do it. Do we have our pipes still on us? I'm curious. Curiosity has peaked. Um, let's request all of them. That's kind of nice. It, if, if it doesn't have 64, it'll request the max that there are um, within your inventory. Sending 11 pipes. There we go. Oh, that's very, very slow, though. So if we have this like that, we have these in the offhand, right? Is that what it means? Like, it just gets covered like that? I guess so. Is there aren't any like other kinds of covers i don't believe so i guess that's all it means by it which is a little bit unfortunate that that's the case um because there aren't any covers are there if we look for covers really quick i know we got to wrap up here yeah yeah i don't think there's anything that we can utilize so well interesting enough i guess so but again something to keep in mind we're gonna just tidy this up a little bit here like so, all nice and covered up. Now, obviously, for us, you are going to see the piping behind there in the corner. But again, I think it's perfectly fine. We will get some upgrades on these and make them a lot quicker. We will do more to them. This is just the first step, getting an intro going into pipes. 
um, which is uh, pretty cool to have. So guys, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in today. We are going to wrap it up there. I hope you all enjoyed the episode. If you did, feel free to leave a like down below. Better yet, leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, or if you have any tips or suggestions for pipes, I would love to hear them. If you are new here and you do want to follow along, definitely hit that subscribe button and bell notification. I'll let you know every single time a new episode is posted here on the channel. We do stream over on Twitch Mondays and Fridays at about 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, roughly. Currently, we're actually play, playing Horizon Zero Dawn, so if you're interested in checking that out and catching a live stream and hanging out, link for that in the description down below, along with the link to the community Discord if you feel like joining in um, and at least keeping up to date with everything that goes on. I do post updates over there on uh, everything that is going on here with the channel and with the stream as well or with the uh, with the Twitches as well. So, But other than that, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it so very much, and I will catch you all in the next episode. Take it easy.